Welcome back. In this video, we're going to set up a Jenkins Maven project, and we're going to set things up so that Jenkins can pull code down from our GitHub repository and build it and test it. Now, I'm going to assume that you already have a project pushed to GitHub that you want to build with your Jenkins continuous integration server. Um, I have set up a sample project, and you can get the files for that project from the gist that is linked in the description of this video. So I'll just quickly take you through some of the files in that project. Um, normally, if you were building a Maven project, your pom.xml file would go in the root of your repository. But if you're one of my students, your pom.xml will go in your lab five directory. So looking at the pom.xml that I've put in here, it's a pretty basic POM. Uh, you'll want to customize the group ID to your user ID if you're one of my students. Same with the artifact ID. Uh, I've set the compiler source and target to be Java 7, and I've added a dependency on JUnit 4.11 so that we can run JUnit unit tests. Okay, so going back to the lab 5 directory, we now have in the source main Java, uh, I have my package structure set up and we have a bank account class. So taking a look at that, um, I just have a simple bank account class that maintains its balance. We have a constructor that initializes that balance. And then we have a debit method that allows us to withdraw money uh, and it will return the amount that was withdrawn. So we will specify an amount to withdraw, but of course the amount that we specify might be greater than the account's current balance, in which case we will only allow it to uh, withdraw the rest of the, the remaining balance. So we will return the amount that was actually debited from the account. Now we also have a test for this class in source test Java. And again, I have the package structure set up and then it's the test bank account class. Now I've put in the skeleton for that class. I haven't actually filled in any tests yet. We'll get to that a little bit later on. So we want to set up this project um, to be built automatically by Jenkins. So the first thing I will do is click on new item and we'll give it a name. So uh, I'm just going to say team 99, whatever your team number is or whatever the name of your project is, you can enter there. And since it's a Maven project, we will say build a Maven 2.3 project and click OK. OK, the first thing you want to do, uh, you could give your, your project a description. You don't need to though. First thing we want to do is set it up to pull from Git. So we're going to select Git under source code management and then we need to enter the path to the Git repository. Now if you click on the little help icon here you'll notice that this is the same syntax that you would enter for your Git clone command. So if we switch back over to our repository uh, you'll want to get the Git the SSH clone URL down here on in the bottom right. So we'll just copy that and then we'll paste it down in the repository URL. Now, we also have to set up some credentials so that uh, our Jenkins instance can access this repository. You'll notice that we got this error message here. Uh, we'll deal with that in just a moment. First thing we want to do though is create a public-private key pair for the Jenkins user so that it can check out code from our repository. So switching back to our EC2 instance, I'm going to switch to the Jenkins user by typing sudo su minus Jenkins. And we are now logged in as the Jenkins user. And if we type PWD, you can see that the home directory for the Jenkins user is varlib Jenkins. So what we want to do is create this public private key pair to allow us to authenticate with GitHub and check out the code. So I'm going to type in ssh keygen tdsa. Okay, and it's going to ask us uh, what file do we want to save the key in? We'll just leave the defaults as is. Just hit enter at all the prompts and there we go. Now if we go into the .ssh directory, and if we take a look, again that's varlibjenkins.ssh, you can see two files in here. IDDSA, that's your private key, and IDDSA.pub, and this is your public key, and that's what we want to associate with the repository on GitHub so that uh, Jenkins can check out the, the project's code. So what I'll do is I will cat the public key, iddsa.pub, and I'm going to grab everything here from the start to the end. And I'll just make a copy of that. And if we go back to our GitHub repository, uh, you can click on settings here down in the bottom right and click on deploy keys. Now we'll just click on add deploy key and maybe give it a name like Jenkins. 
and then paste in your deploy key, paste in your public key from your Jenkins server and click on add key. So what this does, oh, you'll also need to config, uh, confirm your password, of course. Uh, but what this does is it allows the Jenkins server to pull code from the repository, uh, but it does not give it write access to the repository. It only gives it read-only access, which is probably what we want. And then the next thing that we want to do is switch back to the Jenkins server and grab this command that it says is failing. So grab everything from git ls remote all the way down to head and don't include that last quote there. So copy that and we'll switch back to the EC2 server under the Jenkins user and I'll just paste in that command and we'll run it manually as the Jenkins user. And you can see what's happening is Jenkins was getting that same SSH warning that we always get whenever we connect to a server via SSH because Git um, transports via SSH. So we'll just type in yes to that and everything should now be fine. So switching back to our Jenkins server, what we can actually do is have it retry by just simply cutting this and pasting it back in and there you go now the error message disappears and that means that Jenkins was able to communicate with github okay so scrolling down for now we'll just leave the build triggers as is we're going to come back to this later on uh, the root palm again because in my project the palm.xml is in the lab 5 directory i'm going to change this to lab 5 forward slash palm.xml for the goals and options we're going to have it run clean first we'll have it run the clean target to make sure that it is building from scratch and then we'll have it run the install target so that will build everything run all of the tests and install the jar file or the artifact that is generated from the project into the local maven repository okay so next we're going to scroll down and select email notification and you can type in the email addresses of any recipients that you want to be contacted um, to receive notifications about the status of the builds for this project and you'll, you'll need to separate them by commas so i'm going to type in my email address if you are setting this up for your team, if you're one of my students, you'll want to type in your team's email address. For now, when you're testing, you probably just want to use your own email address, but eventually you'll want to put in your team's email address here. Okay, so scrolling down, that looks good. And for now, we're not going to bother with any post build action. So I'll click on save to create that project. And now we should be able to click on build now and have it manually check out our code and build it. So I'll click that and I'm going to click on enable auto refresh so that we can see any changes automatically take place. Okay, so there it's building now. I'll click this and then I'm going to click on console output so I can actually watch the build as it's in progress. So you can see here that it checked out the code from the GitHub repository and it's now running maven clean install on the palm.xml file and that'll just take a few minutes it's going to take longer on the first invocation of maven clean install because it has to download all of these plugins for maven and install them into its local repository subsequent builds will be much much faster okay and once it's done you can see that uh, if we scroll up just a little bit here you can see that it ran all of the tests after after it was done compiling the code the tests well we don't have any tests right now so that phase was successful and so it considers it to be a successful build so scrolling back up to the top and going back to the project we now see that the last build is in blue and that means it was successful and if we actually go back to the dashboard you can see that the project is currently in the success state and this little weather report just gives a trend of, of how well um, or of how stable the code has been in the last few builds so that it's sunny because no recent builds have failed and it just gives us some other information like when the last build was was successful when the last failure occurred and how long the last build took to run Okay, now that we have a project set up on Jenkins, uh, in the next video, what we're going to do is actually get GitHub to notify our Jenkins server when changes have been pushed so that it will automatically build our code for us without us having to manually issue a build. And we will also set up uh, line coverage reporting for our project so that we can know um, the line coverage of our unit tests.